So you've decided to install an ultra-cold cube of iron in your living room. First of all, definitely don't touch it. As long as you resist the urge to touch it, you probably won't suffer any immediate harm. Cold things and hot things are different. Citation needed. Standing near a hot object can kill you very fast. For more on this flip to basically any other random page of this book. But standing near a cold thing won't freeze you instantly. Hot objects emit thermal radiation that heats up things around them. But cold objects don't emit cold radiation. They just sit there. Even though it doesn't give off cold radiation, the lack of heat radiation can make you feel cold. Your body, like all warm objects, is constantly radiating heat. Luckily for you, everything around you like furniture and walls and trees is also radiating heat. And that incoming radiation partly balances out the heat you're losing. We usually measure room temperatures in Fahrenheit or Celsius. But setting our thermostats to Kelvin would make it clearer that most of the stuff in the room has roughly the same absolute heat level, since it's all 250 or 300 degrees Kelvin, so it all radiates heat. When you stand near something much colder than room temperature, the heat you're losing in that direction isn't balanced by any incoming heat, so that side of your body gets cold much faster. From your point of view it feels like the object is radiating cold. You can feel this cold radiation by looking up at the stars on a summer night. Your face will feel cold since your body heat is pouring away into space. If you hold up an umbrella to block your view of the sky, you'll feel warmer almost as if the umbrella is blocking the cold from the sky. This cold sky effect can cool things down to below the ambient air temperature. If you leave out a tray of water under a clear sky, it can turn to ice overnight, even if the air temperature stays well above freezing. You'll feel chilly standing next to your cube, but not that chilly. Nothing a good winter coat can't solve. But before you rush to get a cryogenic cube, we need to talk about the air. Cold objects can condense the air itself, causing liquid oxygen to collect on their surfaces like dew. If they're cold enough, they can even freeze it solid. Engineers working with cold industrial equipment have to watch out for this oxygen buildup since liquid oxygen is pretty dangerous stuff. It's highly reactive and tends to cause flammable things to spontaneously ignite. A really cold object can set your house on fire. One of the biggest hazards of ultra-cold materials is that they often don't want to stay ultra-cold. When liquid nitrogen or dry ice warm up and turn to gas, they expand a lot, often pushing all the regular air out of the room. A bucket of liquid nitrogen can turn into enough nitrogen gas to fill a room, which is bad news if you breathe oxygen. Luckily iron is solid at room temperature, so you don't have to worry about your cube of iron evaporating. As long as you avoid touching it, keep any oxygen on the surface from coming into contact with anything flammable and wear a winter coat, you'll probably be fine. So you've decided, you don't want a frozen cube. The cube will take an awfully long time to warm up. It will sit there at cryogenic temperatures for days, soaking up heat from the room while remaining cold enough to freeze the air. Even if you open the windows and run the furnace at full blast to keep the surrounding air as warm as possible, it will take at least a week for the cube to get close to room temperature. You could try to speed the process up by surrounding the cube with a dozen space heaters with the help of an electrician because otherwise you'll blow all the fuses in your house but it would still take days to warm it up. If you wanted to thaw out the cube more quickly, you could try pouring water on it. The water would instantly turn to ice which you could chip away and discard, leaving some of the water's heat behind in the iron. It might take a few bathtubs full of water but you could use this technique to get the cube up to a reasonable temperature more quickly. Once the iron reaches room temperature, it will become just another object in your house. Hopefully you like it where it is, if not, given how hard it would be to move a smooth 8-ton cube, it might be easier for you to move instead. If you don't want to move, and you're looking for another way to get rid of a cube of iron, you could always try adding more heat to it. To find out what happens if you do that, turn to the next chapter.